Okay. Let's see if the gods are kind today. Okay. Looks like we're live. I'll just do a little announcement on Discord. Might as well hit up everyone. Yes, I will message 200 people. Always scares me when that happens. Melon Kid and James Morris in the chat. How are we doing, guys? Good to see you both. Hope you're having a nice weekend and all that. What have you been up to today so far? Oh, tell you what, it's really warm. I'm just going to open my windows. How is everybody doing this fine Sunday afternoon, evening, early evening? <laughs> Hi Ben. How are you doing mate? Good to see you at the stream. Linkcraft with the lovely profile picture there. Hello Daz1970. I have not... Do I know you? I don't recognise the username. Thank you for stopping by. Good to see you. Apologies if I do know you. <laughs> Doing good, happy with my own place. You've have you recently moved into a new place, James? That's pretty cool. How am I? I'm okay. Yeah, I'm good. I had um, you know quite a slow-paced weekend. It's uh, it's been quite nice. Yesterday I had some delicious delicious food at a uh, cat's parents' house, uh, made by cat's brother. We had some incredible sausage and mash with onion gravy. It was to die for, I have to say. Nice for getting people in the chat, that's cool. Hi Steve, how are you doing? Good to see you, mate. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're still strumming. Hi Scrubs, nice to see you, mate. Good afternoon or good morning, whatever time it is for you at the minute. Uh, you, 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 I believe you said you're in Texas, Scrubs. Am I, am I wrong? You're in Texas? Hi Stefano, how are you doing, guys? Let me know if you've had a lovely weekend and tell me if you've had any delicious food over the last couple of days. You might be able to tell I haven't eaten um, my dinner yet, so. Oh, good. I've got Jack in the chat. Jack, you said you weren't going to stop by and here you are putting emojis. Oh, dear. Oh, man. James Morris got an apartment. Oh, nice. Very, very nice. Uh, that is a big step for everybody getting a, getting the first apartment. So uh, congratulations, James. Let's have a round of applause for you. <laughs> congratulations. I hope that you can uh, put your feet up on a new sofa and so or something. Indigo Sir Gaming finally caught a stream when it was live. Ah, nice one. Hello, glad to uh, catch you as well. Um, this is a little bit different um, to usual because so as you probably know, because everyone here seems to be in the Fuse community as always. Um, there was a planned game jam stream uh, this weekend with the usual, you know, whole format of uh, uploading your creations and I play them on the Sunday. But uh, our servers are unfortunately experiencing technical difficulties, uh, to say the least. Um, and we hope to have them resolved as soon as possible. But of course, uh, we're a small team, so you've got to bear in mind that there's a, a lot going on all the time. And uh, we are very hard at work on this patch. So it's difficult to juggle all these things. And um, yeah, but I'm sure that things will be up and running before too long. So in lieu of that, um, I thought a chill gaming stream would be would be nice. Um, and I was looking through my programs on my copy of Fuse. And I've got a lot of games on here from... All across Fuse's lifespan from the first game jam to this. So there's going to be some stuff in here we can play and have a good time with. I'd like to revisit a couple of specifics actually. Um, so if anyone wants me to play anything in particular uh, or give anything a go at all, if, as long as I've got it, then let me know and I would love to. Um, 
And of course, questions about anything at all, I, I'm uh, I'm well up for. Well, not anything at all, obviously within reason, yeah. Um, but it's it's a good stream for some questions and answers, maybe that would be quite cool as well. Uh, so I'll try and be very involved in the chat in this one. Um, I want to make a fighting game with Fuse, but I wasn't sure if it was a hundred percent possible. Yeah, uh, fighting games are quite um, involved, and the main issue with fighting games is the is the assets, isn't it? Because you need characters, they need a variety of move sets, they all need to be balanced. So it can get very, very involved. Now, there are some specific fighting game assets, actually. This is for you, Indigo Sir Gaming. I'm sure you've probably found them if you wanted to make a fighting game. But if you go into um, uh, Untied Games here, you've got fighting characters with uh, a bunch of cool animations and movesets. So this would very, very much be perfect for a fighting game and it would make uh, the process a lot easier. Um, but it's a difficult one because the assets that you need for them are really, really involved. We'd love to get more assets for fighting games. Uh, hi, Casualties. Nice to see you. Thanks for stopping by. Dave, I have a question. Does Fuse freeze up for you when you go into your shared programs in the share tab? Piano Fire, I think that's because of the server problems. Yeah, I think that's correct. Um, right now, with the share server, these problems are going to be, you know, manifesting in in all sorts of places when you go into the share section so i would uh, just be patient i know i've i know that we've had this problem for a while uh, and they've developed and it's been hard to pin down but as i say we will be getting to it uh, thinking about remastering one of my games that sounds good i'm always up for playing one of your games james hi devious good to see you mate thanks for stopping by Awesome, okay, so we've got a few people here. Any uh, requests on what we want to play first? Any uh, particular favourites maybe that we want to revisit? I've got two that I definitely want to play, and that is... Um, just got a motorcycle outside. Uh, I want definitely want to play um, Watch Out For That Wall, which is a fantastic little game. And I definitely want to play some more of this Fury Box by Waldron. I want to uh, see if I can get a decent score. And I believe, actually... Oh, okay. Would love to see some of those Vinicity Classics TM revisited. I still remember the awesome Mutatio game from one of the older game jams. Yeah, definitely Mutatio. We can, we can sort that out. I would love to play some of that. Uh, so I'll get that on the list. Anything you've been working on? Thank you for asking, Devious. That's a nice question. Um... Yes, but nothing that I can really show at the minute. Um, so, in terms of actual Fuse games, that is. I've been working on a lot of stuff, obviously. Um, but mainly, it's tough to do with the patch. Example programs, help content, and whatnot. Um, but I do have a plan for a game recently. Actually, I'll just... Because this is my Switch, so I can show anything on here. But has anybody seen this game? Slay the Spire. Has anybody come across this game yet? It is a gem. I uh, I can't recommend it enough. It's it's quite an addictive one. It's like a roguelike card-based battle game in which you progress through scenarios and like a whole series of challenges and and you've got to uh beat these really difficult enemies and bosses. It's very very hard, but it is incredibly incredibly fun. Sure have, and it's many, many clones. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there's lots of uh, of games like it actually now as well. But this one made me want. This one made me want to do a roguelike deck builder uh, as well. So I've started something like that, but that is on my development console uh, on the latest patch, and I don't want to use my development console on the stream because there are things that I'm not comfortable showing um, on the stream there as I'm sure you might understand. But hopefully, uh, I'll have something cool to show you at some point. Um, and in terms of, can we see games that you have created? Um, oh no, I did not come prepared for this. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I wonder if I've still got this old game. I have a game that I really want to revisit, actually, which is from ages ago. But it's not really much of a game right now. Let me just, here it is. So this is a game that I was <laughs> putting together quite a while ago, and uh, it's called Sausage Logistics, and here it is. 
you are in a restaurant and you control these two hands with the Joy-Cons and it's a two-player game. One person controls the spinning hand, the other one controls the pointing hand. And when you um, when you hold down ZL, it prepares a sausage to fire. And then when you let go, it fires the sausage. And it's up to the person with the batting hand to try and batch that sausage away. So you go, want a sausage? No thanks. Get out. Get out the front door. Sausage again? No. Out the front door. And this is a game I've... <laughs> I quite like it. I think it's got some potential. Um, what do you think? You have to let me know. I really want to finish this, actually, and make it into a game that has some... <laughs> you can just pile on the sauce here. I thought it was quite fitting to show this, given that I've already talked about how I enjoyed some excellent sausage and mashed potato over the weekend. So we've got half the, uh, half the, the battle won here. Oh dear. Finish it today. That's a good that's a good request, Devious. I don't think I have the time. <laughs> or the headspace perhaps right now. Very strange, but also very intriguing. That is what I wanted to see. See the thing is with me, the problem is with me is that my um my coding eyes are bigger than my coding stomach. So uh I have I have some ideas for this which uh just end up it's like idea creep, you know, and then eventually I, I I end up lost in ideas and I try something else instead and then I, I get tired of a project. But I need to revisit this. Um, what I want to do is to have a a nice intro cutscene that, you know, shows a little restaurant and then it pans the camera around and then you go inside and, you know, all sorts. But I've actually, this restaurant here I've built out of uh, simple assets. So it's all blocks. The walls are all blocks. The ground is the, the the same sort of terrain object that I use in 3D Crazy Shooter. And Linkcraft noticed the uh, the super slow fan. Yeah, that's doing nothing, is it really, for anybody? It's certainly not wafting away enough of the sausage smell, which is piling up, as we can see, because this many sausages produces a smell, no doubt. There's uh... what I really like is. <laughs> You can see one on the. Oh, I just covered it up. But if you um, if you let if you if if you, if you bash away a sausage too quick before it grows, and you can make really small, <laughs> really really tiny ones look, and then he bashes the tiny ones away. <laughs> oh God! Look, there you go. Look. <laughs> Don't know why it amuses me so much. Anyway, I'll stop that. You've got to go. Try to come back later. We've got to take care of something. No problem. See you later, Indigo. Hope to uh, catch you later on. Thank you for stopping by uh, for what you could. It was lovely to see you. It happens. Wanted to have full-on collision for Galactic Bolts. Ah, yeah, Galactic Bolts. A brilliant game by uh, James Morris. Oh, Steve, yes, you said this before. I meant to catch that. Dave, do you have Pinicity? It's a game Vin and I made. It's on your shared games. Okay, well, I'm... Uh, I may be able to, Steve. I will check out your shared games, just in case. We are going to get... Uh, it, it may even crash at this point, going into the share gallery. Okay, it was okay with that. Uh, Steve, where are you? You're here. Ooh. Okay. The friend share uh, appears to be working at the minute. But uh, it's uh, so right. Yeah, I've got Pinicity. Should we give this a go as a uh, as a first one? We'll kick off the stream with uh, a Steve, a, a new Steve classic. And I suppose that with the share server for friends working, maybe there was some way around doing the game jam. But I really didn't want to risk it because um, it would it would really just wouldn't do to have everybody put, you know, 48 hours of work in and then to have a lot of stress and maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. So, Steve Vanicity. This is a Steve and Vanicity collaboration dream team project called Pinicity. Um, and I believe, is it Bagatelle, Steve? Is that how you say it? Bagatelle or Bagatelli? It's a, it's a take on a classic old, old, old... Um, 
I, I want to say board game, but it's not. I mean, it's a it's a gambling game. But it involves a board and some pens. Let's see what this is up to. Get some more volume on my monitor so I can hear. Oh, let me know if you can hear, by the way. Is that game volume coming through okay for you guys? Is it too loud? What do you think? What would you... Let me know if I need to adjust those levels. You have five balls. I mean, look at that title, though. Really nice. Really, 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 really nice, Steve. I'm seeing the... Uh, the combination of Steve and Venetity already paying off wonderfully because we've got an even more awesome title screen than ever. About right. Okay, perfect. I can uh, I can work with perfect. I now associate this music with Steve. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Okay, I better start reading. You have five balls. Press A to release one. See how many points you can score. Good luck. Score one point per pin hit plus whatever slot you landed. Awesome. I love that extra ball icon. That is what reminds me of Steve. Like, animated retro fonts. <laughs> okay, so... Let's drop. Oh, did we get it two times? We get nothing, we go into the ten. That was about as bad as it could possibly be. Okay. I want to get a, a multiplier. Oh. Okay, I'll take a hundred. What happens if we just drop it over here? Oh, oh one times. Go on. Oh, scary stuff. <laughs> I really like it. It is beautifully done. It's just simple enough and immediately playable. It's beautiful. Uh, okay. Oh, my Joy-Con lost connection then. Didn't quite drop at the time I wanted to, but... Yeah, I'll take a 10. At least it's positive. Super, super cool. We've got physics as well. Yeah, that's something I completely glossed over. Um, so I think that this this team of Steve and Venicity is something I hope to see more of in the future, because... Uh, yes, look at that four times. Extra ball, 100. Bang on. That's what we need. We need more of those. Nope. That's not good. That's a minus. Excellent. Oh. Great ball physics. Yeah, definitely. One for the high score challenge. For sure. For sure. See, the only thing is, I'm not sure about technique. Is there... Oh, wow. Okay, just about. Any secret bagatelle... Champions, want to give me some tips? Come on, that's surely got to go in the... Yes. Just going to not get a negative score now. Steve, does the negative... Uh, does the multiplier bonus apply to the negative scores? So, like, if I have a 5 times multiplier and I hit a minus 100, am I getting minus 500? Oh, my, the physics. <laughs> Can't wait to learn them in school to apply them. Yeah, I should, um, I need to work on getting my head around um, programming physics. Maybe I'll ask Vanity for some help and we can do uh, a stream or a video um, about those as well because it would be really, really cool to get in there. Oh, this just also reminded me, just saying that, that there is a video that, I've, that I made quite a while ago now, but with the patch... Um, with, with the patch work that's been going on, there just hasn't been time to, uh, or the person power to uh, to get it edited and finalised and uploaded. But there is a video coming soon on uh, managing larger projects, which is one that I've um, been asked for a few times, and hopefully that'll be out soon. Nope, negative 100 is uh, times 5 is still only minus 100. Yes, that might be a bit too cruel, Steve, I agree. <laughs> that's going straight. No, it's not. Yes, it is. It's not. Not in the minus. Okay, I need another extra ball. No. Okay. I'll take a positive, though. I just want to get an extra ball. Oh. That's it. 
I think I scored, oh no, the high score is 722. Let's see if I can get a better score than that. Oh wow, that had some seriously horizontal movement. Okay. No, it's, it's, it's lethal when the ball goes down the sides like that. I can't be doing that. I just wanna, mm, terrible at getting these bonuses. Come on, that's an extra ball. Oh my good lord. <laughs> this game, it makes you tense. It tenses you up. Oh, that's good. That's good. Thing is, I can't remember exactly where I dropped that. Is it like here? On the other side? Uh, no! Okay, good. 811. That'll do. Maybe a video that shows how to pull off effects like text effects, masking, and maybe even cool 3D camera tricks. That's a very good idea, James, yeah. Again, not something that I'm very... I, I, I don't have much confidence in my ability with stuff like visual uh, visual effects like masking. Um, might have to get Cat to import some genius on that one uh, because it's not something I'm too experienced with. Cool 3D camera tricks, definitely, yeah. You can get a lot of mileage out of Sin and Cos, that's for sure. I want to try and break a thousand. I feel like I should be able to... Come on. Aww. That was nearly a 5x. But it wasn't to be. No, oh, okay. No. That was an extra ball. Minus 50. Okay, that was bad. Zero points. Let's see if I can pull it back. No. Lots of pinpoints, but... Oh, I just got them all wiped out. I wonder if I can just score zero whilst still trying not to. Okay, that one was terrible, and yes, here it is. Come on. Yes, yes. Yes. How about a video where we learn to finish the game of Sausage Logistics? To be honest, Linkraft, it was so long ago that um, my programming style has, has changed quite a lot since then. So it's it's uh, it's one of those, isn't it? I, I might have to even completely rewrite it. But yeah, I should, I should, I really should finish that game. It would be a good one to have uh, in the Fuse included projects for sure. Um, just for the pure silliness factor. No, come on. All right, well, that was absolutely terrible. You have a community of very smart people you could collab with. It's true enough, James. Um, and something I want to do as soon as possible, um, as soon as the patch is all behind us, is uh, to set up Discord so that it can, so that OBS can listen to it. And then we can have uh, like a live stream chat room where uh, on certain live streams, People can jump into the Discord channel and we can chat and they can give their input on games um, and do some coding with me as well. That would be really cool. Oh, that's a terrible one. Well, Stephen Venicity, you should be very proud of this. It's, uh, it's beautifully functional. See, that's what you need to do. That is the hit that you need to get, isn't it? It's got to go on that one. Oh, okay. It needs to hit the one to the left or to the right of the bonus, depending on which side you're on. And then uh, it needs to bounce off the, the pin above it. Ah, oh, That's an extra ball, though. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Oh, ten. We still have three balls. Nice. Okay. Oh, come on. Okay, let's see if we can get another... Nope. Ah, cruelty! <laughs> Down to zero. Next week's... Uh, this week's weekly... <laughs> 
How about doing this week's weekly challenge? That's a that's a hard one to say. Yeah, so the um, the coding challenges, it's just something that Lucas and I have been talking about. Uh, and he was really eager to get um, a, another challenge posted and for us both to be involved in posting regular challenges. So the idea was that um, in the middle of the month, so to sort of punctuate the game jams, um, there will be a challenge. So it'll be every month and we'll have a beginner and an intermediate level to them and, uh, and then it will alternate that with the game jams. Uh, this one was postponed though, I know it only went up very recently uh, because we've had just too much going on at the time. Um, but in the future we hope to make those uh, middle of the month sort of time. Let's have a look at it at the minute. I haven't actually... I haven't actually put the time into this one, but we've got some good results already. I see, I see, I see. Maybe, maybe. I want to I, I wanna keep playing some games for now. I really like the tutorials of Ben and yourself. A series on the framework for a text and click point adventure would be great. That's a really cool idea, Mark. Yeah. A point and click adventure is... Um, it's, a, it's a real fan favourite, I must say. Yeah, Monkey Island style, yeah. Possibly someone could correct, put me in the direction of a fuse example. Mark, um... You're not going to be able to download it right now because of the server, but you should download when it's uh, up and running the one of the games that won the um, the very very recent Fuse retro coding uh, competition in association with Wireframe Magazine. Um, the game Station Z52 is a perfect example of a point-and-click adventure game in Fuse. In fact, it's the most it's, it's, it's one of the biggest and most accomplished projects anyone's made in Fuse, so that is uh, definitely one to check out. Uh, challenge idea. Give a code with a bug in it and have us fix the bug or multiple bugs. Yeah, good ideas. We've got a good little list of ideas going as well, so we should hopefully be... Uh, we've got plenty of ammunition for the coming months. Uh, Kevin, hi. Is mouse capability to be implemented in the future? We would like to implement mouse capability, uh, mouse support, but... Right now, it just cannot be something at the top of our priorities list. It's um, we, we've got a very rigid set of priorities right now, and it's going to be that way for a little while. Oh, ice cream van! Does anyone want an ice cream? I'll pop out and grab one. No, I won't. Maybe I could get Cat to get an ice cream for me. <laughs> oh, okay, we did it. We did it. I managed to score zero points despite trying not to. That was the secret challenge. That's a fantastic little game, Steve and Vinicity. You should be very, very proud. Uh, it's just a beautifully playable, well-implemented little game. Fantastic. Devious, you mean the high score challenge? Ah, if I've got it downloaded, then we can give that a go. Let's have a look. What is it? Oh, it's Mud Rover. Ah, okay. I do indeed have Mud Rover. Maybe we could do that, actually. Let's have a look at the high scores. Uh, Vinicity's got 10,281. 10, Linkcraft, 16,205. Uh, Gothon, 16,000. Oh, Gothon has made improvements since the last jam. Um, is it the latest one? Vinicity, do you know if that's... Uh, actually, no, Vinicity isn't here right now, is he? No problem, Steve. Thank you for making it. It was uh, That was great fun. I can't wait to see that in the high, sc uh, high score challenge. It's a perfect one for that. Let's have a go at Mud Rover. The thing is... Let me just have a quick check of the server to see what the health is right now. I might be able to download it. Let's just try. Let's try. MND9L. Okay. <laughs> right, yeah. I, um, I'm not going to pretend to uh, 
thoroughly understand these server issues, but it is going to be a, a hit and miss thing. So we've got the latest version of uh, Mod Rover. Perhaps things are looking a bit more stable now. Um, all right, let's have a look. So Josh the Gamer has managed to get 17,893. Ben is in Linkcraft, 24,481. Oof. Okay, these are big numbers. Hey, Vinicity. Hi, Purple. Nice to see you guys. Uh, okay. So, I forget now how this game exactly works. So, we, we press B, don't we, to clean. Oh, okay. Oh, I see. We don't even have to be... Uh... Ah, I see. Very, very nice. Outrageous. And of course, you can rotate it in true Gotham fashion. Just unbelievable. I wish I understood this. The 3D maths. Because I want to see, like, an RTS infuse in this sort of style with this rotatable lovely 2d but with 3d projection stuff uh, in the in the way that Gotham does it it would be awesome so that's right I have to drop off the cargo there that's right my score is only going up isn't it yeah I better clean this. Oh, I've got... I'm full. Wait, how does our HP go down? Is it if we reach too high up? Or if the mud falls on us? Not got much HP, and I take it we can't recover HP. It's when you get hit, hit by the. Uh, oh, you can go up and down as well. Yeah, that is tough actually. Oh no! It's hard to see exactly when I'm when I'm gonna get hit. Let me. Bending my brain, this camera. Two HP. Okay, we can't take another hit. Okay, there it is. <laughs> okay, that's a ten. That's not a good score. Not a great score. Let's see. Let's see if we can do better. Now that we know a few things. Okay, I'll just take damage straight away for no good reason. Ah, the shadows are the way to tell. Can it ever become, like, oh no, is there another game over condition or is it just when your HP gets to zero, like, um, is there a maximum amount of mud that can be built up? Oh. And it is just what we clean isn't it it's not that because they look like solar panels the thing that we're actually cleaning and it's like i'm wondering if the cleaner the panels are the more points we build up so it feels like i just want to move around quickly but i'm just taking damage by doing that it is such a cool little game the more mud the slower you recover energy okay right so it is that they are powering us it's, it's mean that the mud can still fall on us when we are recovering our energy. But it also makes sense. Not recovering energy, when we're emptying our cargo. Oh no. Maybe this view actually is the one. Oh no. Oh, get out of there. 
That one's hard because then you can't see your height. Oh. Hmm. You must have been playing for quite a while, Linkcraft. To get a score like that. Oh. I keep accidentally knocking the right stick and just look at... It looks so good when they're all piled up like that, when the dirt is all... It's just ridiculously cool looking. Ridiculous. I would love to see an RTS made out of little tanks that look like this, you know. It's like shoveling snow in Sweden at winter. <laughs> I do have one experience of uh, Sweden in the winter of NST when I was a very, very young child. Uh, and we were in Sweden for a little while. And yeah, you guys are too used to snow. It's not fair. Oh no! The lethal drink of water. But yeah, the snow in Sweden, it is just something else. It makes the snow in England look like a gentle dusting of salt. Oh. Oh dear. We are not doing too well. I've got a better score than last time, I suppose. But it's getting harder to recover our energy at the minute because of how muddy it is down here. Let's just clear this up a bit. It is so good. Oh, oh no, I'm in a bad spot here. Try and get over here. Oh no. Bit more energy, bit of a clean, bit more energy. <laughs> so I think we do recover energy at this position faster, do we? Or is it just a global thing? That's going up like that. It feels like it's faster when you're in this little zone here. But yes, no ginger beer. <laughs> Sadly not. Today I've just got regular old, boring old water. It's not good enough, is it? I need. I should have a ginger beer, really. It should be uh, customary. But I, I haven't been able to look at the amount of mud that's piled up. It looks like... Uh, reminds me of Habbo Hotel, this does, <laughs> for some reason. Okay. I feel like... We are nearing the end of our run here. Oh, no. Oh. Poor old clean bot. Just scraping together the last little bits of a score. <laughs> it's very, very gradual. Well, we're not dying, though. We're alive. For how much longer, I can't say. Oh, my movement is really restricted. With this much energy. I've let it get too dirty. Oh no. Oh. Get up there. Okay, there it is. Oh. I just immediately started again. Stefano, how do you die? So if your HP gets reduced to zero, I think that is game over. And you get hurt when the blocks of mud fall onto you as they are doing here, and I'm not doing a good job at all of avoiding them. Um, and you can see where they're gonna land because of the little shadows, but they also spawn not very high up, so it's quite unforgiving. They, they, they hit you quite quickly, like that. Need to get my eye in, get my brain attuned to these uh, 
mod globules. Let's get those pumped up. Oh no. I need I need the side angle. There we go. I just can't believe that this was actually made <laughs> used. You know? It is a thing of beauty. Alright, we need to get this cleaned. Let's just get all that cleaned and then drop off the cargo. Hopefully don't take any damage on the way. Gotta go, Linkcraft. So glad that you could see... Yeah, I'm glad that you could stop by as well, dude. Thank you for stopping by. Enjoy the rest of your day. And uh, I'm too concentrated now. I'm... Uh... <laughs> But now Linkcraft won't be around to see me beat his score of 24,000, not likely. Wish me luck. Yes, Stefano, yeah, the, the, the ship turns a little brief shade of red. I need to get rid of these ones. There we go. It is very, very satisfying, isn't it, to see all the mud get cleaned up. Okay, deposit. Never gonna happen. <laughs> hey, famous last words. But I'm sure that you must have gotten into quite a zone with this, dude. Oh, okay. See, I'm getting to that point again where my energy levels are really low. And it's so mean how the, the mud drops on the hole there. Okay, we can get rid of that. Oh, I thought I could just about avoid that little splodge. No! The splodges are everywhere. Oh. I'll tell you another game that this... Another game that this reminds me of. Oh no, I've got myself really caught up there. Did anyone ever play a game called Blast Corpse? on the N64. It was like a building destruction game with a variety of robotic characters that you control around the level and it was absolutely awesome. One of my favorite games of my childhood. I never see it talked about. Anyone play that one? Vanity was painful memories ever featured in any streams. No, actually, that's a good one to I will definitely play that. I will give that a go. Yeah, look up Blast Corpse because uh, it had a real. I mean, if you can find a way to play it, uh, nudge, nudge, wink, wink, then um, I really recommend that you um, that you play it. It's a really cool little game. And I would love to see something like that infused. Definitely possible, given our 3D engine. Certainly possible. I'm thinking with uh, Colin as a main character, the Fuse Colin. That is. I just want to get ten thousand. And then I'll be happy. Oh, it's a, it's a, this runs a, a write-off, isn't it? It's not safe anywhere. Yeah, honestly. I think Gothon could make a K240 clone using this code, one of my favorite space strategy games. Never heard of that. K240 game. Ooh, yeah, I, oh, I love the look of that, Steve. Beautiful looking game. The isometric, lovely pixel art. Yeah, Steve, that's an intriguing one. I might um, I might give that one a go, actually. Okay, we managed to not die somehow while waiting in the corner there. So I'm just going to clean a bunch. See, oh, okay, I broke 10,000. I can rest easy tonight. Oh, 6%. Oh, no. One more hit. Okay. Gotta play careful. Oh, what hit me? 
I'll take it. 11,358. Tell you what, let's log that score on Fuse Arena quickly. Purple, you gotta go. Dinner's ready. Well, mate, I would never want to keep a person from their dinner. Let me know what you're having, because it's always nice to hear about people's food. £10 for a non-boxed Blast Corpse car on eBay, mate. Is that right? Let me check that out. Because if that is what it costs, then I am quite tempted. Blast Corpse. Yeah. Yeah, tenner. I mean, twelve ninety nine with a box. It was such a cool game, and it had a great soundtrack as well. Really, really great soundtrack. Potato Boy Chicken, what time is it? For, what time is it for you? It is currently six forty five in the evening. Uh, six forty five. Twelve forty five for you. So we have six hours ahead, uh, and I can tell you, it's a good six hours. So you should look forward to those next six hours. I am from the future. James, you had an egg roll. Is that like a... As in, you just... Like a, like a basic omelette that you rolled up? Or are you talking like... See, the thing is, this is the difficulty, isn't it? Right. Tell me... I want a bit of trivia from all of you. What do you all call... A bread roll? Where you're from. What do you call a bread roll? Do you call it a bap? Do you call it a balm? Do you call it a cob? Do you call it a stotty? Do you call it a roll? <laughs> Everyone calls it something different in England, and I want to know where you're at with that. Bread cake? Mark, whereabouts are you from? That's got to be more than that. Um, I've missed a few things. Purple, you're having tortellini with some different meat and veggies. That sounds fantastic. Enjoy your tortellini very much. Uh, that is a lovely thing to eat, so. Big Italian table of different stuff. I am incredibly, incredibly jealous of that. Okay, so um, I hope <laughs> I hope that you enjoy it. And uh, try not to imagine me stealing bits off your plate. Spicy rice and pork. The wife made it early so I wouldn't miss a minute of the stream. That's lovely, Steve. What a lovely thing. Spicy rice and pork. That sounds really nice. Uh, Mark C. Sheffield. I knew it would be northern. <laughs> no one below the Midlands calls it a bread cake. Uh, I mean, that's perfectly fine. Perfectly fine. I'll accept it. Daz, you're saying bap? I like it. I like it. Steve, you say, it's a tea cake. A tea cake. But a tea cake is that specific things with the with the raisins in, right? Isn't it? Tea cake. It's got the raisins in. I don't like raisins. Uh, scrubs just a roll? Yep, no, I'm expecting, yeah. I think America is going to be roll for the most part. Carbon Derby, yep, okay, that makes sense, that maps on. The only city in the UK which calls it a cake, that might be right, actually. And Devious. Boletia. Is that how you say that? Is it a, a, a soft J, a soft J? J, like in yogging, the term yog, to yog, you know, to, to walk quickly, yogging. It's not a soft J. What, so is it actually like bolet J? Or how do you say that? Give me a phonetic typing of how you say that. This is now more important than anything else. <laughs> Softy loaves. We either call them rolls or yeast rice bread. Okay, I quite like softy loaves. <laughs> I think I'm going to start uh, coining that one. Steve, that's a current tea cake, is it? Okay, all right then. All right then. I mean, I'm I'm not with it then, obviously, in uh, up your neck of the woods. And I'll bear that in mind because I don't like them, um, current tea cakes. So I'll make sure to ask uh, for something else. Cinnamon roll, they are really good. I love the cinnamon swirl rolls, you know, like the pastry and the swirl. Okay, Devious, it's Bolotia. 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 Oh, so it is a soft J. Yes, Mark, that was what I was... I was wondering if anyone's from Manchester and if they were going to say BAM cakes. Lovely. Okay, that was a nice little... Uh, <laughs> I love this. This is great. Like 30 people. 16 people all telling me what <laughs> bread roll is. Fralla. Fralla. How do you say that? 
How do you say that? Is it the typical Swedish way where it's got like a d d frolla, <laughs> something like that? Emphasis on the first syllable. Oh, okay. Um, note the apostrophe. Oh, right, yeah. God, I didn't see that. Actually, it's very small there, hiding away. Bolletier. Bolletier. Tea cake is a Bradford thing. Oh, okay. They're called Baps where you are now, Blackpool. Ah, right, okay. Because I, I think Stoke is Baps. I grew up in Stoke, and that was what I always called them, a Bap. Frala, frala, frala. Yeah. Very cool. All right, so now I know what to ask for when I inevitably uh, go all across the world <laughs> sampling the uh, the bread rolls of the world. Okay, oh yeah, I was going to log my score, so let me just put that down. 11358. Uh, 11358. You saw it. You all saw it, so you know I'm not cheating, like Linkcraft. Hey, <laughs> throw a couple of shots there, a couple of shots fired, even though I don't think he's cheating, just for the record. Soup, beans, and cornbread. Hmm, that doesn't give me the location but that sounds fantastic soup beans and cornbread that's uh that is my kind of meal depends what sort of soup it is of course if it's a nice chicken soup with lots of vegetables chicken thighs excellent if there are any americans here try putting chips in a bread cake <laughs> chip bap chip butty in it Shit, Butty. Wills35. I love that that's... <laughs> Dude, I don't know who you are, Wills35. Um, I'm, Apologies if you have been here for a while, but that's the first thing I've seen you say, and it's also the first time I've ever seen you in the uh, chat, as far as I know, so it's just hilarious that the first thing I know of you is just Chip Butty, okay? It's called the Chip Butty. <laughs> I just find that really funny. Okay, let's... Uh, should you play something else? So I'm going to talk about bread rolls all night. <laughs> I'm having a uh, katsu curry tonight. Katsu curry. Ready meal from Marks and Spencers. So it's prestigious. Okay, it's uh, the real deal. I ordered a scallop della casa. Oh, hi, Joyrider. Nice to see you, mate. Uh, slash Willems. I ordered a scallop della casa from a local Italian restaurant. It's a scallop with ham and cheese Gr uh, grated with white wine sauce and pasta. A scallop is the, um... It's like a flattened piece of chicken, right? Is that right? Like the breaded, flattened piece of chicken? <laughs> I was in the last stream and said you need to play Fuse more. Ah, okay, Wills, okay. Well, I'll take it. I will take that. Um... But to me, you're going to be the guy who knows about the the magnificence of a chip butty. Um, did you see my comments from earlier, Scrubs? Um, I apologise, that might have gone past too quick. I think you said something about um, wanting to see me try and get some more purple times on Super Funky Bowling, which I'm definitely down for. Anyone else find white bread bland and tasteless? I can only eat black, brown and home meal these days. Car Steve, white bread, not good enough for you. Sorry. <laughs> Too good for white bread. No, um, I tell you, Steve, I prefer brown and home meal big time in terms of the flavour. But it does a number on my stomach, brown bread. I'm not sure why. It makes me, uh, gives me a stomach ache. Like, guaranteed, it's like in immediate heartburn, stomach ache. I don't know why. But, uh, so white bread doesn't do that for some reason, which is a shame. Pinto beans slowly cook over rice with fatty ham and cornbread baked in the oven, best served with fried potatoes or pork chops. That sounds fantastic, James. I love pinto beans, and I love refried beans. Um, and, yeah, that all sounds great. Wait till you had cornmeal, it makes brown bland. 
I like cornbread. Cornbread is a, it's got a nice it's got a nice texture to it, nice flavour. Okay, um, you've really this is the subject, isn't it, for me? Food is the the quickest way into my deep long term memory. It's something of a an in joke with anybody that knows me in person that uh, <laughs> my memory works by attaching meals to events. So. You might ask, like someone might ask me, oh, you remember that guy that we met? You know, he does this and that. He has this sort of a face, like face shape, and he's got this really obvious discerning feature. And I'll say, no, I'm not. Don't know. God, it's not coming to mind. You know, he works for this person, and you've known him for ages. Nah, it's definitely don't remember. And then it'll be, we went to that pub. You know, just round the corner, that pub, the uh, on that road, the A41. I'd be like, oh yeah, yeah, I had that pizza with the really spicy sausage and the artichokes on it. And suddenly I'll, re I'll remember the person. This is what I'm like. I, I, uh, I, I used to think it was people making it up when they said, you always do this. But you no, know, it is true. My, my memory attaches food to events. What have we got here? Not sure if you saw my comment, but Galactic Bolt has an Easter egg with the journal. Oh, James, I must check that out. Uh, don't confuse cornbread with cornmeal bread. Cornbread is essentially cake. Uh, is it? I, mean, I get cornbread every now and again. It's uh, it's not as... It doesn't feel like cake to me. It's, But I get what you're saying. It is, it's closer to cake than like white bread, for sure. It's got more of that sort of grainy and stuff going on. Uh, I'm tempted to prepare a meal just to send you a pic on Discord. James... I'm always up for receiving a picture of a delicious meal. Okay, so if if you want if you want to make a meal and send me a picture of your delicious meal, I mean I'll be happy to see it. Um, but don't go out of your way to to do that. But I mean if you if you're making one anyway, you might as well send me a picture uh, of the delicious meal. Okay, let's let's play something. I've uh, I've been chatting for too, <laughs> way too long. Uh, right, I was gonna play something specific. Let's see if I can get a few... Oh yeah, Vinicity, you mentioned painful memories. Let's have a look at painful memories. Now, I have not played this really much at all. I know Kat's put some time into it, but I haven't, um, I haven't put the time in. So this is going to be quite fresh, I think. If you haven't seen this one, um, it's a fantastic and polished game as are all of Venicity's brilliant games. Lovely choice of music. Look at that beautiful title screen with the reflection in the in the in the water or what looks like water. It is absolutely stunning, Steve. You are dead right. We've got I know it's got some beautiful menus as well. So I've got no save data currently for this because actually funny enough I was using this game to test to test something recently so I ended up wiping uh, the save data. So this is the first level. Let's have a look. Now it is just beautifully done. So I mean, I, I think that it's pretty obvious immediately what the uh, what the goal is. If you've ever played one of those sliding picture puzzles, it's uh, just look at the polish, you know. And I love that someone has used that cursor. As well, the mouse hand cursor, because that doesn't get used very much. So we've got to start rotating stuff and swapping swapping things around. Um, this one has some ground on it. So let's... Can I rotate that? Now that one looks like it wants to be on the ground. So let's swap those over. That one is also ground. Let's swap those over. Rotate that. Now, is it... The things chasing the dude probably is. Let's tell you what, actually, we can see if it is because a window just went past there. Yeah, so it's... Oh, no, this is first. Maybe it's the guy chasing the things. Anyway, let's get the rest of the ground pieces on the ground. Uh, then we can figure out. Obviously, that one's going to have to go next to him. We can do that. There. Now that looks like, yeah, that's working perfectly. Vinicity, this is such an insane game, man. It's just ridiculously well made. Got the Minecraft menu feel to it with the relaxing music. Yeah, very much so. 
Green, fa green fading font is cool. I agree. I really do. Actually, Vinicity, is this one of your fonts or is this a Steve font? Because that immediately makes me think of Steve when I see that font. Um, actually, yeah, this piece of music never gets used either. So I'm happy to see it in here. To hear it in here, even. Okay, so we've got... Uh, let's... I mean, that looks like it's part of what we want to happen. I'm just... That must be the top piece. So we need to get that piece. Put that there. Oh, no, here. There we go. And... Oh, no, it gets... There we go. That looks right. This bit needs to be swapped around with there. Let's get that one over there. Swap it around. Beautiful. Okay, now let's finish off the dude. I think that's his head there, yep. Yeah. And the tail end. Now we just need to line up all the, uh, the other parts. So, this looks like the top to me. And the roofs are definitely going that way. This one's got to go first, right? Um, let's just put those there. Like that. That looks good. And... No, no, this one needs to go here and upside down. There we go. Beautiful. Oh, we've got some uh, responses. This is this level is a stealth follow-up to Fuse Fit Adventure. Yes, of course, of course it is. It's the character from Fuse, Adve Fuse Fit Adventure and the um, little dudes. <laughs> what would you call them? Little slime guys. It's Steve font, of course. Yep, yeah, can tell it immediately. Your font is purely program programming. Your own fonts is uh, is good font. Mind blowing. Good job for the creator. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's not a Game Jam stream, but I'm very happy to do a quick round of applause for Painful Memories because it hasn't been showed on a stream before, and it's a beautiful game, and it deserves a round of applause, so well done, Vanisti. It is a fantastic game. Um, right, let's go to the next level. I mean, we've got all these different levels, and it's just gorgeous. Okay, this is... Now, assuming that it's rotating clockwise... So this one's got to be in the middle somewhere. And that's the top corner. That looks like it lines up well. Okay, yeah, that's good. Oh, although maybe those go horizontally. Oh, man. This one is tricky. Which way is that ship going? I mean, I presume... Right, it's got to be that way. But then... Oh! <laughs> this, this, this orange ship is just flying all over the place and it is so hard to tell. Oh, those two are perfect. Those two match up properly. And it is going clockwise. And there's the ship flying around really nice. Let's swap that one with that one. I think that is about right. That one could go there, right? No. That one? This one. There it is. It's like making a giant piece of cheese. Ah, the synchronization number. <laughs> that will tell me if it's working or not. Ah, Vinicity, thank you for pointing that out. Um, right, let me just... That's got to be a bottom left, then. And... No, I mean, that looks like the bottom left, actually. Oh, this is tough. Get that one there, maybe? Does that have... No, that's not the right one. It's... Where's that one going? No. This is tough. That's got to be on the left side. Because it's bright. And it's got to be 
up there. Okay, that's now correct. That's the one for that place. This has got to be on the top. Maybe here? No. Oh, this is not right. That's a top one. No, it's a bottom. It's a bottom one. There it is. There it is. And there's the ship. That's what we need. No, nope, we want that here. Oh, where did that go? Where did he go? <laughs> there it is. That's the one we need. Okay, cool. All right, 75%. Uh, that's got to be a top one. That's got to go like here. Yes, that looks good. That's got to be that one. Yep. There's that. And that. And there it is. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> it is so good. <sighs> Watch how the ships appear on the tiles. Yes, that's Mark. That is what I'm going for. Um, Well, it was eventually what I was going for, but the moon is distracting, you know? Always rotate them to right orientation first, then move them around. Ah, uh, yeah, you guys, you're all pro, aren't you? Forgive me for being so slow. That's a good idea, actually. Let's let's try that. Let's try the rotation, okay? Because I like that idea. So let's get all the... Let's get the car. Yeah, that seems like a pretty good tactic. I shouldn't be... Uh naysaying let's get the let's get the ground on the ground hey okay? how about that let's just put the ground on the ground and then figure out where we're going perhaps this yes that looks good cool back of the truck front of the truck uh is there a tiny little corner of truck still no okay so i just saw a there's a tree. See, this is an interesting one with the particle effects. I feel like the moon is going to be in the top left. Uh, right, sorry. Oops. This one there. And like that. That obviously is not right. So <laughs> all the trees are moving upwards instead. Okay. So it's got to be... Where's the branch? Is it that way? Yes, that looks about right, actually. Oh, no. This one is actually throwing me for a loop. Okay, no, no, that is correct because of the particle effects. This one... I need for all the trees to be moving left. Right, that's left. That's left. That's going left. That's going left. Right. Oh, mate, this is actually spinning my head around a little bit. Okay. That's now going left. I feel like that one... No, no, we know that those ones are correct. Yeah. So the bottom... The bottom eight are all correct. That one seems like it wants to go there. No. Oh, this is actually really spinning my head around. <laughs> uh, so the moon's obviously going to be... I mean, it can't really fit in many other places. Maybe this here. This one here. This one here. But now we are... Right. So, that one needs to go there. And that one needs to go there. No, it is... It, it is on the right, the moon. It was just the wrong way around. No? What's wrong with this? 75%. Ah. Aha! Okay, it was just that. Well, super cool. I remember seeing this one, but don't remember having a spin feature. 
tree go up. <laughs> I remember seeing this one but I don't remember how it's been featured. The moon is in the right top corner, yes. Looks super cool and puzzling. It is. It's uh I mean this is just such a beautiful example of a fuse game right here. Oh man. This one makes me think immediately of uh, Know Your Place. Okay. This one's a bit trickier because... I mean, okay, so let's just get these... Submarines... At least the right orientation. Okay, those two are definitely together. This one here? No. Oh, now they're all together. Oh, man. That one needs to go there. Oh, it's actually craziness. Okay, I need to, let's just figure out the submarine. That one there, is it? Yeah. That one there? No. Where is that wanting to go? There it is. And then we need... No. I just want the edge. Where is that edge? Is it that one? No. Is it that one? No. Where is the corner to that? There it is. That's got it. Um, no, that doesn't feel right now. Oh, I just had a chat. Is it all custom art? No, it's fuse assets. Except the fireworks. <laughs> Bubbles go upwards. Of course they do. Of course they do. Okay, that helps. <laughs> uh, that one's going down. That one needs to go up. And that one needs to go up as well. That one's going down. Let's get that going up. Now, where is that? There's an edge. There it is. That needs to go there. Yeah. And then there's an edge that moves in. Where is it? I'm looking for a green edge. Is it that one? Yes. It seems like it. No, it's not that one. Okay, where's that blue fish gone? So, blue fish is coming in. Where's he gone? He doesn't appear in any of the others at that moment. So he goes there. Okay, that one's definitely spinning my head around a little bit. Does this one go here? No, bubbles, 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 Dave. Bubbles. Stop getting confused. <laughs> See, what I'm confused about now is the fish. Maybe these all need to be at the top. Yeah. Yeah. This is what it is, isn't it? I've got the bottom layer wrong. And that's why I'm getting so confused. And... No? Oh, my word. Oh, I'm messing up the controls here. This one is really hurting my brain. Bubbles go upwards. Weird that it looks like a third complete. It's only on... Yeah, it's... 
12% now, so maybe that moving things up would really help. Love the red truck, very adventure game style. Have a question. When Fuse 4 was starting out, did you expect games like this to be made in it? Um, that's a really cool question, James. I'm going to be honest. I really didn't have many expectations in terms of the sorts of games that people were going to... I mean, it's... Uh, I knew, obviously we knew the scope and what was possible, but then it takes, you know, a certain person with a certain mind and all of their influences. The thing I love about it is that every Fuse game is a piece of art in the sense that when you create something, you know, you bring your whole personality to the table and everything, all that you are, influences the decisions that you make, all the creative decisions, even something really basic and simple like a quiz game, you know, it's a basic, basic game. It's still, it's like a little emblem of you. And that's what I love probably the most about the Fuse games is that, you know, it's like a little, like a little living reference to a person, you know? I mean, like any piece of art, like a piece of music or a, or a, or a drawing that people do. It's uh, it's like that, but I, I didn't, I never had an idea that like this game would be made, you know? I think, you know, some of the standard ones maybe were what I expected, like a platformers and um, some sort of like, uh, you know, your classic retro games, your, 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 your space invader types, your snakes, um, but uh, certainly not, I mean, yeah, the, the creativity in this community amazes us all, it really does. So, this one, definitely wrong that is obviously that that is obviously that right it's got to be so that one wait that looks right though doesn't it no it doesn't it's there yes it is there but then i don't see any with the pink fish does a pink fish just sort of go missing. This one looks like it's... No, that was a... Uh... I'm mistaken there. This is tricky. That's not it either. That one's obviously got to be that one. They're just moving too similarly, but then... This one is the hardest one so far for me, and I don't know why I'm struggling so much. Yeah, that's got to be that. Um, no. See, where does that fish go? <laughs> It makes me think that I've I've got it completely wrong. Maybe there, maybe this is the aha. Uh -huh. Here we go. Here we go. Um, wait. Yeah, that was why I was struggling so much. But that one looks very very much like it should be there. That can't be right. And that can't be right. Oh? No, I need to look at the fish again. This is really spinning my head around. Focus on the fish. Look at the percentage. You need to move a lot of the pieces one step to the right. Okay. <laughs> um. Yeah, and let me get that left wall again, unless... No, that's not right, is it? But... I obviously can't go there. That's definitely that. But I'm not seeing a tile with this green stuff appearing at
Uh, no. That's got to be that. That's got to be that. That one's that one. There we go. Getting somewhere. That goes there. They're such beautifully constructed scenes, aren't they? Okay, that one's that one. There we go. Oh my word, we got there. We got there. Whoo! <laughs> Check out the octopus. That is a dizzy asset, isn't it? I recognize that octopus. Let's catch up with the chat here. Back from dinner. Hi, Stefano. Nice to see you again. Uh, it looked like a representation of the being that created it. Yeah, exactly. Well said, Dave. I think Fuse brings out the creativity within one. It's a way to express oneself. Absolutely right. Um, another question. What was a demo game featuring Colin walking on the tile as the eyes stared at him? Very curious since a tech demo video. Oh, yeah. That was uh, yeah based on a fantastic game called I, Robot. I, Robot. I would check that out. Uh, it's, a, it's a beautiful game. Uh, and a real unique little game. Uh, I'm sure that John will uh, finish that one at some point, but it was quite a long time ago now. I've got to be honest, this is the first animated puzzle that actually uses the animation to its advantage to both give you hints and distract you. Yes. Stefano, that is a beautifully put analysis right there. It's exactly right. It both helps you and distracts you with the, the gameplay mechanic. And it does all that because Vinicity is a genius. Plain and simple. Right, let's um, let's do one more. Okay, this one looks a little bit easier because we've got recognisable ground. And it's a fight, it looks like, between a couple of people. And I'm thinking, like, that must go there. That one's going there. That one's going there. That one's there. Beautiful little scene with the sunset going on. I think, yeah, the scenes are just such a lovely touch. Wait, that's not what I want. I want... There we go. And we've got the sun effects here and here. And now it's clouds. That one seems right. That one's got to go like there. And let's get them all rotated to be the right way. Um, where are we? It's, it's really weird because your brain actually really does have such a hard time of it at times so that goes to there that's going there but then it all sort of falls apart there why what yes a move counter would be a cool idea actually yeah for like a challenge mode or something but then once you Actually, Vinicity, does it randomize it in the same way every time, or is it is it different every time? I imagine it would have been probably easier to do it differently every time. Um, right, so hang on. Let me just try and figure this out a little bit. See that? Aha. That's there. And that's there. Oh, punch. Kaboom. <laughs> Very nice. Vin! Oh, lovely. Beautiful. Great work. That's made me want to do another one. Oh, man. Have we even got ground on this? I mean, I think it's safe to say that the scenes are going to be moving left. Because, you know movement and all that stuff so everything's moving 
bit crazy right now. That one was already correct. Why am I changing it? That's that and that and flip that around and we've got left movement. Now that definitely can't be right. So because she's now running upwards. So it's going to have to be that she's it's going down maybe. She's jumping. Maybe this is a constantly ascending thing or constant descending. No, it can't be that. Yeah, we're going upwards. It's the only orientation that makes sense. Um, so. Let's do that then. Proper little Metroid, Metroidvania sort of scene going on here. Oh. Oh, no, that one's the wrong way. Okay. So it's going to be lining up the uh, platforms. And the pipes. Metroid level chaotic. Yeah, very, very much so. The slime is dripping downward. Ah, oh, lovely little hints, dude. So I presume that this dude is the guy at the top causing all this chaos. There we go. And... Ah, so that... is perhaps the leftmost one? Maybe that's the leftmost one. So it's this, is it? Okay, it doesn't fully go all the way over to the left. In fact, that's obviously there. Oops. I'm going to have to use that as an intermediary place. Okay, yeah, he goes all the way over from the left and right. Okay, that's happening now. So now, where's the slime? That's actually hard to, to do because it's coming out quite quickly, but I'm seeing... No, it's hard. There's slime in a lot of these. Ah, that looks... No, it doesn't. Oh, man. No. Nope. Oh, okay. I want to find... That's, that one's putting me off. When this big block goes down, that's that one. No? Yes. Then we need another. Where is it? Is it that one? It is not. Okay, I'm trial and error at this point. That's not good. Percentage, yeah, there's the percentage, but then you just... That's cheating, isn't it? <laughs> Does it increase the percentage if you move a piece into the right place, but the rotation isn't right? That's a good question. I'm not sure if it has to be fully working. I'm just trying to see where that chunk appears. There. Okay, that looks right. And now she's running over... not right. Um, down one. Oh, this is really just breaking my mind. So she jumps there. And then it's that one. And there. No. Oh, why can't I get that? That just doesn't look right, even though it's... It's because it moves down. 
I mean, she could be a lot lower than... Um, maybe he's not the very... No, he has to be the very top, because there's nothing that shows another part of the spider. Oh, it's a hard one. It only goes up if the place and rotation is correct for the... Uh, That one's there. Why am I not getting that one right at all? No. That way around. Yes, yes, okay. And where's the, where does her head appear? That little corner here. There it is. Right. Nice. Nice. Okay. So. The platforms are what's throwing me off now. Um, it's there and there, is it? No, not even slightly. Oh, what did I just do? I just messed it up. <laughs> oh no. Hey, that's in the right place again. Where did that one come from again? Um, I'm trying to look for the feet. It's so slight. It's just a... Uh, there it is. That was the one. Okay. There we go. Woo! Oh, Vinicity. Such awesome little touches. Like, you had her take a breath, like, sigh of relief, and you could see the little air come out of her mouth. That's so cool. Amazing. Should we, um, should we try something else, guys? I think... I think I want to, uh, see that's a beautiful game, I would I would finish it, but it's already half past seven uh, and this stream isn't going to go on for too, too much longer. I want to try and get some, let's try and get some scores in uh, Super Funky Bowling for a minute or two. I want to see if I can get a couple of scores. I'll tell you what I'm going to do as well. I'm going to transfer over to my Pro Pad, but... Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. Let's catch up with the chat here. You know, working with the 3D stuff, I realize terrain has way more use than just terrain. Yeah, James, you've got some really interesting applications for terrain I've seen. In fact, you've used it to apply textures to objects, I believe, which is very, very, very impressive. Uh, but yeah, the terrain certainly hasn't been thoroughly explored in Fuse yet. That is for certain. There's a, a lot that can be done. I'm just going to check... It looks a bit dark right now on my face, and you're actually starting to see the um, the RGB. I've got. See, this is really annoying, right? Because I've got this quite cool behind my desk lighting, um, and it's uh, it's a shame because you can't actually see it, but you do get a bit of a reflection off me. Let's see if I can show you what this looks like. See what I'm saying? How cool is that? What are you thinking of my RGB backlit desk? <laughs> it was a real faff to get the uh, RGB little strips all on the back there because it's quite a solid desk to, to get behind, but I think it looks awesome. So it's a shame that it's not like behind me as well, so you get uh, lots of the light effects. Oh, and the old guitars there as well. <laughs> Pro gamer move, yeah, exactly that, mate. Exactly that. Well, you've got to, haven't you? See, what we need is for because this is this is Cat's desk behind me. Um, so when we are working, we're just <laughs> back to back. <laughs> it's just working, but we need to get the same thing on Cat's desk so that you know you can see the RGB or fancy behind us there. Where is Waffle? It's a good question, Vin. Um, I'll tell you. 
cat washed and cleaned his um, little cube. This is little cube zone. And now that it's not covered in his hair, I think he's uh, I think he's a bit annoyed. So he, he no longer goes on it anymore. So we need to get some treats on there to make him, to coax him up there. Oh, that's a little bit orange now. Really brings out the uh, pastiness. He's on the sofa downstairs currently. And yes, Cat is the one with the Triforce. And actually, James, Cat is also the one with this. This is pretty cool as well. It's like a master sword plinth. I just love this. <laughs> I wish I owned this. It's like cooler than anything I've got. And it's got some real nice weight to it as well. That's a great idea, Vinicity. We should get Waffle a little desk. Then he can do some work as well. Pull his weight around here. He's just take, take, take our Waffle. What else have we got? We've got um, Cat's favourite Smash character. Mr. Game & Watch, of course. And then we've got my favourite Smash character, Moth, from Fire Emblem. Just the various desk buddies we have at the minute. <laughs> See, this has now become just a Dave shows off the the desk stream. I currently have not a band practice each week, although it sure feels like a band. That's awesome, Mark. I'm desperate to join a band, actually, at the minute. I... Uh, it's been a long, long time since I've played in a band, and I really, I really want to find something now that um, COVID is, uh, well, it's not relaxing, is it? But now that we're, we seem to be moving on, and we're what's next to Slay the Spire stream? I mean, if if people want to watch me play Slay the Spire, I'd play. I'm, I'd play it. It's a great, it's a great game. I'm, I'm absolutely in love with it at the minute. So. Um, Maybe we could do that. Maybe sometime in the week or something. We could, uh, like I say, I want to do more just sort of hangouts and gaming streams. And um, I'm certainly not averse to just playing some other games as well. And then we can get some inspiration for the game that I want to make uh, in Fuse as well. Because I've got some really good ideas for my Slay the Spire-esque Fuse game. Because I want to use... I want to do some slightly more traditional fantasy themes. So I'm going to have um, four, well, four or five classes. And um, I want to have a warlock who summons skeletons in there. And then you could have like a whole sort of synergy tree of cards that, um, you know, that, that synergize and upgrade and change these skeletons. Maybe like you could summon basic skeleton warriors and they can just do passive damage um, and they could also soak up some hits as well or you could have skeletons that you know give you extra mana or some extra card draw got some good ideas and a priest class as well that uses money uh, to increase its power which I thought was uh, it's sort of my wry tongue-in-cheek comment perhaps on the the clergy <laughs> What is my favourite skeleton, Jens? That's a good question, and it's going to have to be the skeleton... Mm. There was a show I used to watch when I was a kid, and it was about skeletons. It was like a skeleton family cartoon show. Let me try and find that. What was it called? Yeah, that was definitely the skeleton, but... Maybe it was just called Skeleton Crew. Funny Bones. That's ringing a bell. Funny Bones. Yes. Yes. Maybe a separate channel called Fuse Gaming. Yeah, that's a cool idea as well. I mean... Hmm. I mean, the channel isn't super big, so I, I'm eager to just get eyes on the channel no matter what. So if it meant... You know, I mean, I think it's perfectly suitable content. You know, we could have just a separate uh, playlist or something and, and they can go in there. 
Jack Skellington is a good skeleton. Yeah. Not a bad choice, Jens. That's uh, a classic skeleton. Yes, Mark! Yes! <laughs> oh, mate! Honestly, the last 30 seconds in my head has just been... And I swear the theme tune was like... The dark, dark street in the dark, dark cellar. Yes, mate! Oh, my God. That is some nostalgia. It's all flooding back. Oh, my God. Oh, that's put a big smile on my face. That's awesome. In the dark, dark street, in the dark, dark house, there's a dark, dark door, and then there's a dark, dark stairs. That was awesome, that show. Oh, Steve, I love the trap door as well. That was one of my favourite shows as a kid. I used to love that. I forgot there was even a skeleton in there. Let me check him out. Oh, yeah, it was just the skull, wasn't he? I used to love that show. <laughs> it's such a cool show. Dry Bones, also a good skeleton, yeah. Um, right, let's play some super funky bowling for a bit. I'm not sure if I've got... Because super funky bowling is one of the games that is actually giving us a bit of a hard time with the, uh, with the server at the minute. So I'm not quite sure why that is. But uh, I can't get the latest version, so... We're going to have to keep going. Oh, Sans or Papyrus. Yes, Devious, you're right. I, it's Undertale is not a game that I've really put the time into, unfortunately. Um, but yes, he is a, obviously a much-loved skeleton. Um, okay. I'm trying to remember how to do this level. And I remember that it was like, do that and bounce off the corner. Oh, that is just going great over the place. Now, see, I never played Undertale, but um, I have played a lot of Earthbound, and Earthbound is one of my favourite games ever. It's a, just an absolutely... See, that's what I need to do, that little jump. So it's off this... Oh. Trapdoor, Brill, my 3D printer is named after the spider. <laughs> That's awesome, mate. Ah, oh, what is it with northerners and having great taste, eh? Eh? Honestly. <laughs> but yeah, Earthbound is such a beautiful game. That's, uh... It's quite an involved... Uh, it'd be quite an involved thing to make in Fuse, but... Uh, I would love to see something like that. I'd be well up for doing some... Uh, some collaboration on the writing for that because oh yes okay well I did the strat but didn't get the purple time you gotta bounce off the side and then get that boost it's bouncing off the side I need to get my super funky bowling skills back. Oh! <laughs> Any other good skeletons? I'm trying to think now. Oh, so close. What other famous skeletons have we got? So I actually, it's very hard to think and play this game. I must say. Oh, what are you doing? Famous skellies. Oh. They are, Jens, I totally agree. Nigh impossible. Oh, I didn't mean to Oh, I didn't mean to do that either. <laughs> Reflexively hit plus. <laughs> the Iron Maiden mascot. I think you've just uh, you've just won some points with cat there, Jens. Definitely an Iron Maiden fan. And a much loved scale. Oh! Oh! Is it purple? Oh! That was such a good attempt! Oh! Okay. Oh, come on! Eddie! Yeah, that's his name, isn't it? That is the name. Of course it is. Please. Yeah. How uncultured I am. Come on. 
That's not gonna get it, is it? Because my best was point. Ah, oh, again, didn't mean to do that. So close, Scrubs. I'm glad that you're still here. Um, now, how do you do this one again? There's some, there's some trickery on this one. Oh, not that. Um, you go backwards first, and then you go up here. Up here. Oh! You definitely go backwards first. Oh, Dave. Oh, he's trying to get the sides too much. Oh, dear. Okay, come on. Backwards first. Get that one. Let's just try and get the run actually going. So I've got to go like this. And then... Oh! <laughs> no! Oh. Skeletor was always very misunderstood. <laughs> I think you're right there, mate. Definitely uh, a misunderstood character. Just, you know, that damned He-Man. Always meddling with plans. That wasn't even a gold. Oh. Okay. Come on. Oh, you've got to do a real tight jump there. Skeleton from Masters of the Universe. Isn't that Skeletor? Oh, I'm too shy on that pin. Come on. Let's have you. And then just jump. Oh, I think I did a bad jump. It's definitely, definitely gold. Is it the sweet perp? No, so that one is... So silver's 14.20. So it's 10.20. I've got to do this in 10 seconds. Oh, on the wrong one now. Um, how do I get to level select? There we go. His parents didn't have much imagination when naming him. Oh, that's hilarious. Oh, I totally missed that. I want to see, I want to calculate what the time I need to get is on this one. Six seconds is not doing it. So the best is 7.40. That's one minute 40. So it's going to be 5.20. Wait, no, what? Scrubs. You said that the purple time is the same gap. Is that right? Oh no, it's going to be 420 then. If it's one second, if it's 1.4 seconds below, no, it's 4.4.6 or not? Oh, I don't know now. 4.6 seconds, I think, is what it is, isn't it? Oops. Totally missed it. He-Man's Pet Tiger. Now that is uh, a difficult one. I didn't watch enough Masters of the Universe to know, really. It probably had some really dodgy name. There were some, <laughs> there were some very strange names for the characters on that show that were a little bit questionable. Oh, that would have been good. Oh, you can do it. You, you actually can do this, Dave. So just do it. On this one, no, obviously never gonna happen. It's, I can't be doing it if I've got the corner being that wide. It's just a terrible. Okay, let's go. Okay. Oh, it's too low. <sighs> I'm not hitting that pin at the right angle now because I'm trying to get too tight on this. Turn. Oh, it's hard, man. Scrubs, you're such a nice guy. <laughs> oh. Honestly, I want to watch Scrubs play flat out just Super Monkey Ball. 
I bet he's insane at it. Okay. Come on. Oh my word. David. <sighs> okay, I'll try this a couple more times and then I'm not going to let you guys watch me fail again and again and again. Let's try a different level. Oh my word. Oh, Dave! It's because if you don't get up this bit in. <gasps> oh! God! <laughs> oh, the pain is real. Actually, real pain. Physical, real pain, scrubs. Causing physical pain. <laughs> but it's a it's the best pain ever. YouTube Skeletor insults. <laughs> I'm point one seconds away. It's not fair, scrubs. It's not fair. Oh my god. Oh, you're so. Because I watched your videos, scrubs. I watched the the videos that you uploaded. Um. Scrubs has actually uploaded clips of him. Wait, Scrubs, can I use that pin to just... No, I can't, can I? Oh! Oh! <laughs> Come on! <laughs> Okay. <laughs> oh, scrubs. <laughs> I watched Thundercats again recently. Terrible. It's funny, isn't it? Like I remember a lot of shows and think, oh yeah, that show was so good and enjoyable. But then, yeah, actually, turns out <laughs> they don't age well at all. Does anyone remember Biker Mice from Mars? That one was a favourite of mine. And a slightly more obscure one. 11.40, it's not happening that. I have a new goal, make Dave obsessively play my game. <laughs> I mean, Scrubs has, uh, he chose a good one in Super Monkey Ball to uh, to recreate because in terms of getting me to obsessively play it, I mean, I love some Monkey Ball, but, um, and I thought I was good at it, but I'm not, turns out. Turns out I'm really terrible at it. Yes, mate. Yeah, Biker Mice from Mars was better than Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs> no, it definitely wasn't. But, oh, oh, hold on. Blow the old nose. Oh, get up there. Come on. Oh, not enough. Well, not enough. Oh, I didn't mean to go on next level. You want an obsessive Dave, make a deck builder. Devious, you are not wrong, sir, you know. You're not wrong. You evidently already know me fairly well because, uh, yeah. Deck building is uh, one of my favorite things in the world to do. <laughs> and I have been a Magic the Gathering player for a good 14 years now. So, and deck building is the thing I love the most about the game. Straight up rip off Mario Sunshine. Ah, that's a great game, isn't it? Mario Sunshine. What a beautiful game. I uh, love the sound effects, especially the respawn. Yeah. Um, heavy hitters, you're totally right. Every little tiny bit of polish in this game is just ridiculous. Um, 
I love that animation. Isn't that great? Animation and sound effect just mwah, chef's kiss. Smooth, solid gameplay as well. Devious, you weren't exactly coy when you told us about like, this fight. Yeah, it's true enough, actually, yeah. I, I uh... <laughs> what exactly coy? You got a good way with words. Oh, come on, Fate. I'm trying to... See, I'm, I'm being deliberately careless. Not careless, but very, um... Dingy. you got to really throw the ball around if you want to get the good times. That's never getting there. Terrible. All right, come on. Oh, maybe I shouldn't be slowing down there. 15, 16, ah, oh, terrible. Does it replicate the feel of Super Monkey Ball well? Honestly, Stefano, like, you you couldn't tell the difference. <laughs> when If you're sitting here playing it, it just feels like Monkey Ball. I mean, there's nothing, it's just perfect, is what it is. See, I want to see how much of a... You can definitely do some really nasty tricks on this level, like with the jumping, but... I've watched the man himself. Oh, Adriana, you're the you're the person I met in the uh, Tame, right? I remember your name. Definitely remember the name. I, I, am I right there? Tame workshops. I wish there was a fuse coding event for my son. Oh, I'm trying to remember your son's name. Does it begin with R? I remember him being a very, very clever lad. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Oh, that's really nice. It's lovely to see you. I hope you're doing well. It's been it's been a long, long time. Well, I'll tell you. Um, Rowan! That's it! <laughs> yes, I was thinking Robert. And I knew it wasn't Robert. Um, well... As, luck, as your luck would have it, um, so Fuse has just moved into a new office. In fact, actually, I'm not sure if anyone knows, actually, I will just announce. Fuse is moving into a new office. Uh, we've, we've, I mean, I've been in and out of that office quite a lot the last week, um, packing and just, you know, making everything look nice. Because we've had to move it all from um, Grendon Underwood to, uh, to Tame. So we're now going to be in Tame. And this place is awesome because it's going to essentially be a workshop room. So we don't have to rent out halls anymore. So we're going to have a classroom with tons of TVs, um, you know, switches and monitors and keyboards and everything set up so that we can just have people in to do workshops. So you will be seeing a lot more of us in Tame uh, in the near future. So we are working hard to get that all up and running, but there's a lot to do. There's a lot of work going on. So hopefully... Um, when that's all up and running, we're going to be running um, half-term workshops like before, but also having school workshops come to us and after school clubs, youth clubs, uh, for people who are interested in gaming and uh, you know and making games as well. So hopefully we will see you there, I, I, uh, I hope. Yeah, because you also came to the Sheffield one as well, I remember. I remember seeing you at the Sheffield one, you and Rowan at the Sheffield one. I'll pop down tomorrow, Dave. You can give me the royal tour. Oh, Steve, that would be really cool, actually. <laughs> I mean, Steve, it, we can chat about it, but if you ever want to come and have a tour, I'm well open to you coming and have a tour. We can. Uh, it's right opposite a snooker club as well, so if you play snooker... <laughs> uh, can I come? Do you do coding for over 30s? Mark, we will be doing. We absolutely will, yeah. I'd, obviously, the youth clubs and half-term clubs and stuff, it's going to be, it's gonna be uh, youngsters, but... That doesn't mean we want to do some classes for, you know, for, for adults, but also for old people as well, for elderly, elderly people, for older people. So, um, I mean, watch this space, essentially, Mark, I'll say on that one. Watch this space. We'll, we, we will be putting um, notice of all this on Fuse Arena and whatnot as well. Um, 
So yeah. If only Italy had coding projects in schools like you have. That's really sweet, man. I mean, if only England did. <laughs> We're not big enough yet. We'll get there. And then it and then Italy can follow suit as well. Love Sheffield. Jen, do you want a tour? You're very, very welcome. I'll give you a tour of the place, mate. You book the flights. <laughs> Oh, okay, this level's hard though, isn't it? <sighs> schools could benefit greatly. Well, that's the idea. I mean, um, once a school comes to see, you know, our location and they can see, you know, that you can set one of these locations up, the idea is to turn this office into something that can be replicated elsewhere. So hopefully, you know, people can see what a benefit to the community it is and then we can train other people um, to get people setting this sort of a thing up and doing a fuse, you know, coding club, half-term session thing uh, or location anywhere. And then we can have it all over the country and that'll be great. But um, yes, I'm very eager to get more workshop staff. So staff that I can train to deliver workshops and, and, and teach the sessions because um, currently it's just me. <laughs> I love you all. This is such an amazing thing. Oh, mate, that's such a nice thing to say. Uh, thank you very, very much. Love you too, of course. That really means a massive, massive amount, Stefano. Thank you so much. That's lovely. Uh, replication is smart. That's the key to the successful business model. Indeed, indeed. Jens, you want to set up a Fuse office in Sweden? Let's go. Let is, let's go. And then that gives me an excuse to go to Sweden. And... Uh, Eat the delicious, delicious shukbola, if I'm saying that right. Shukbola, is that right? The meatballs, dude. Shukbola? Am I getting that wrong? <laughs> I think I've got that right. But I'm probably butchering the uh, pronunciation. Okay, let's level select. I don't want to do that level anymore. It's just killing me. <laughs> um... Let's, uh, okay, I'm going to I'm gonna play a little bit of another game uh, and then I'm going to call the stream to a close, I think, because it is getting on a little bit and I've got to have dinner at some point. If you have any large fuse events that need food, I know someone with a burrito truck. Mark, don't let me forget that. In fact, can you just, uh, if I send you my address on Fuse Arena, would you mind just <laughs> send him down, send him down my way? Burritos, eh? I could definitely eat burritos. But I have to put up with the non the sad non-burrito meal that I have planned tonight. <laughs> I wanted to showcase uh, a game that hasn't been on a stream yet, because it wasn't made for a game jam, and I don't believe it was made for a competition either. And that is Watch out for that wall. This amazing game. Oh, Scrubs, yes, it spells Fuse, of course. It's, uh, well, it gives you this, the character values for FUZ. I like that. What keyboard Joy-Con combo can you recommend? That's a cool question, heavy hitters. Um, well, I wish that there was something out there that like a keyboard with Joy-Con rails would be great, you know that would just be awesome. But uh, sadly, I think the best thing that you can do really is to just put up with the you know having the Joy Cons disconnected. But you can get the little charging little controller as well, or use a Pro Pad. Um, a lot of people like these little stands that we had. Do they have them? You search that. There was a company that made. Oh, that looks new. See, there's definitely Japanese ones because I I was aware of the Japanese ones, but. Hmm. Yeah, something like it. I have. Okay, yeah, I've definitely seen this before. It's like a Japanese keyboard, but with Joy-Con rails on the side, which is which is really really cool. But obviously, the Japanese keyboard not so useful for Fuse. 
the touch screen is also good for input. It's true enough, gents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm pretty um, bare bones, you know. I use, I just have my switch in the dock, a pro pad, and then I've got this neat little thing. I'll show you. Um, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but it's this, right? It's got a little button on it here. And when you press that, I've got it set up so it just sends the um, sends my switch keyboard input over to uh, my computer and vice versa. Got my uh, kendo stickers there, little kendo dude. <laughs> Put that back on there. Use books to hold your switch up on a wireless keyboard. That sounds good. The book method. If it works, then there's, you know, what can you say? You can't really complain, can you, if it works? Um, but yeah, I really recommend one of those switches, the, the little um, the little splitters. They are, they are really, really helpful. Because then I can just lean over, quickly press a button, and then type away, uh, which is great. On the official Nintendo site, you can get proper stands. Yeah, there is a... Um, I'm trying to remember what it was. I think it was called Hori, H-O-R-I. Um, switch stand. And it was... It was quite nice. It was, yeah, they've, if you Google H-O-R-I, Hori switch stand, they do some quite nice ones that act as like a, like a little mini dock. And for the, for the workshops, we used to have like 30 of those set up with a switch on them and then the keyboard just right next to it. So it's kind of just there, which is, that's quite nice. But I, to be honest, I, I mainly just run it in docked mode on, on the, uh, well, TV mode, I should say the proper terminology, TV mode on my monitor next to my computer monitor, which works for me. Uh, what else have we got here? On the official Nintendo site, you can get, yes, I've read that one. 0111 is A and A, you can, is a space. If you do the math, you can make any sentence in binary. Yes, indeed, although it's very inefficient. Confused detect if it's connected to a PC or laptop. Um, no, Fuse cannot detect that. Um, yeah, it doesn't have, I mean, switches don't tend to uh, allow communication from PC to switch, unless, of course, you're talking about a development console, which that's part and parcel of it. But uh, N N Nintendo are understandably, you know, they don't want people sending information from their computer to their switch uh, and just freely communicating with it. But heavy hitters, what we wanted to do, just what I just meant to say, um, we wanted to release a Fuse branded keyboard for use with Fuse for Nintendo Switch and then in the future other, you know, Fuse products. And it would be laid out, you know, like the Fuse keyboard is here. So you'd have your menu key, you'd have your, uh, your media button key as well, the help key. And that would be really cool. That would be ideal. And then that would be part of a physical Fuse product. So you'd get it, you'd get your game card, and you'd get your your mechanical fuse keyboard and a printed ring-bound version of the uh, reference guide as well, of the help. So you'd be able to have that. Still waiting for a fuse t-shirt almost two years later. Yes, yeah, Steve, it's a good point. What you need to do is to hassle John for that one. I'm just going to point, I'm just going to deflect all that to John. Send him some direct messages on Fuse Arena uh, or Discord and just keep saying, uh, I want a t-shirt. And then maybe we'll get some Fuse t-shirts going. I'm, I'll get Cat, also hassle Cat as well. Just not me on that one. Um, but Cat and John, they're waiting for those requests. Just eager. Um, I think Cat should design it. And then we can get it. We can get something printed. We need to do t-shirts. It's absolutely criminal that we don't have t-shirts. Bootleg shirts. Yeah. So shirts that go on your boot. So it's like your leg is wearing a shirt. <laughs> You're scared of John. Uh, well, that makes two of us. No, no, I'm not scared of John. He's lovely. He's very approachable. Actually, I should say, um, John, this weekend, was at a uh, a pinball competition. And it's like a UK pinball event that happened like every couple of... Like, I think like twice a year or something like that. Um 
and he did really, really well. I don't think he ended up qualifying for the finals today, but he, he did place, like, basically in the top 25 people, I think, um, on day on day one, which which is pretty insane, considering he's never been to one of these events before, but he is a real pinball kid. It's his, It's probably his greatest... I think he might even love pinball more than more than he loves like video games to be honest maybe maybe that's probably saying too much i don't know i think it'd be hard for him to choose but you shouldn't be scared of john he's a he's a gentle giant but yes cat's uh less intimidating than john by an order of magnitude so yes he is a pinball he sure plays a mean pinball and with that let's play a little bit of watch out for that wall which is just tron-tastic. Well, Devious, funny you should mention that because uh, pinball video games is something that... I don't want to say too much, but we have some things in the works. Um, definitely going to be a good idea for me to do a video on ball physics, I'll tell you that. Yep, yeah. Jens, maybe just hold off. Hold off a little bit for now on the pinball game and just sort of just wait wait see if anything comes up see if anything gets mentioned at any point you know i'm not saying it will but i'm also heavily implying that it will oh james that's a cool idea yes it, it, heavy hitters it should have it should have the uh rails on the fuse branded keyboard there definitely should be one. I mean, it would be really cool, no doubt. Mm, especially with the nice colours as well. I don't know if anyone has uh, seen this game. I think it was one of the high score challenges for, for one of the weeks, and it is just beautiful. It's beautifully done. a conversation I think I was just reading that that's cool about a cat on a keyboard I understand where he put his paws so in what direction he moved it's gonna be a difficult thing to read because cats are hard to keep in one place really but just look at the camera work on this game oh it's so pretty let's get rid of that dude Look at the camera work, man. It is ridiculous. Let's get rid of that dude as well. What else have we got here? We've got another yellow. Oh, he's a grey. Oh, no. No way you're getting in there. Oh. Oh, I did the same thing again. I need to go a bit closer. Oh, -hoo -hoo. love it. That was beautiful. Such Tron vibes. The grid floor, the light bikes. I mean, they're just made out of basic shapes. So cool, man. <laughs> it's just, it's the closest I'm ever gonna get to actually playing real Tron light bikes. But the, I just can't get over the camera work. Like, you need to feel how good this camera feels. Oh, how did you manage to get out of that? He's done. He's definitely done. Yeah. Ooh, -hoo -hoo. that was a bit close. Oh, it took me out. Oh, that grey fiend. Got you. Ah, oh, I didn't want to die there. I just think that this is one of the most outrageously professional looking games we've got in Fuse, to be honest. Right up there with Super Funky Bowling. 
Station Z52. Oh no, I'm on a losing streak now. Okay, double kill. Okay, and just kill myself. What have we got? Interesting game. Is there a pause on this? Doesn't seem like there is. With the Joy-Cons I.O. ports, could we theoretically turn our Switch into a CNC machine or even a 3D printer? What's a CNC machine? I'm sorry, I'm not familiar with that term. There's another movie that hasn't aged too well. No, Gens. Tron's aged well? You can't say that Tron didn't age well. Tron's aged beautifully, like a delicious cheese. I think that Tron... I mean, to be fair, like it, it's so 80s, it just hurts the brain. But there are some bits, right, that look like retro still. Like just, as in like, they look old, but they look cool old. Um, I think it's, that's an example of something dating fairly well in my book. Like the outfits just, they never get old to me. And I love the beautiful scenes of, you know, like when you've got the space paranoids all coming in and they're driving the tanks. And the little bit, you know, the little bit that just says yes or no. I love that thing. Oh, okay. It was a mutually assured destruction there. See, now they're all faster than me, so I'm going to have to get clever. Uh-oh. Okay, that's just... That was doomed from the get-go. Okay, they're just sort of playing around over there. Oh, they all, they all dealt with themselves there. Oh, I need to not look at the chat. The pacing is very slow. That's true enough, actually. The pacing is very slow. Um, but still, I, 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 it's been a while since I've watched Tron. I need to watch Tron again, actually. But I can't pause the games. So I can't, like, <laughs> just stop the destruction briefly. Oh, I just took a screenshot. I didn't mean to do that. Um... Tron is one of the greatest films ever. Still as cool as the first day I saw it. Yeah, that's how I feel. Like the, it's just got such a majesty to it, and master control. You know, he's just so cool. <laughs> End of line. My horror game might take a long while. Just realised I'm programming each pixel. There's got to be a better way to do it than pixel by pixel. But you never know. I mean. If it's the only way it can be done. Oh, I thought I wasn't lining up with that. Loved it when I was like nine, but it bored me when I tried to rewatch it. What do you think of the new one, then? Um, Tron Legacy. Oh, that was mean. He really took me out. Classically. Oh, no, come on. I'm invincible. I should be invincible. Oh, it doesn't last for very long. There we go. Terrible. Wow, I did much better the first time. Yeah, I actually got a decent score on the uh, when I first had a go. Imagine staggering spawn points around the maps from it to, to avoid collisions. <laughs> CNC is basically any machine that translates some type of code like G code to mechanical movement, normally various real world access controls. Ah, I see, I see, I see. Well, yeah, you do have a lot um, of movement in the Joy-Cons, for sure. There was um, something in the old in the old version of Fuse, Fuse Basic, which is what we used for the workshops back in the day, with the um, these, like, Fuse metal boxes, which was essentially just a Raspberry Pi in a box with a keyboard and in-out and a USB hub and whatnot. And it came with the uh, Fuse installed on there, Fuse Basic. And... Um, we used to use robot arms with that a lot because it was a real big hit with the uh, with the kids at workshops and learning, you know, teaching them how to uh, just assign robot arm controls on these various motors to various keyboard buttons. But you could do a lot with that with the Joy-Cons and if there was a way of connecting a switch to a robot arm, that would be extremely cool. I mean, you could do, you can do a lot with the Labo stuff, to be honest. I mean, obviously, it's not... Um, like official fuse support or anything but i mean 
It's all just gyro and motion controls. So you can really, you could write a Fuse program that uses any of the, of the, of the Labo stuff. Although we don't have access to the IR camera as, as it stands right now, which is definitely obviously something we want to do in the future. How would I go about updating my game? Daz, is that, is that a game that's already on the server and you just want to uh, update it with a new version? Because if that's the case, if it's already shared and you already have a version on the server, you can just go on share program from your game. So if you did this... Um, oh yeah, there are some good names on there actually. On the high school, uh, high school table, high score table. Yeah, so Daz, let's say for example, if I um, if I had, so if I had a version of Sausage Logistics on the server, and I wanted to update it with a new one, I just go on Program Options, Share Program, and that will update the version that is shared for you. So you don't need to resubmit it or anything like that. You can just do Share Program, and it will update it on the server. But we are having server problems at the minute, so I wouldn't bank on that going perfectly. I would give it. Um, a few days at least before we can really start to work on it. Um, so I do apologise about the ongoing server issues. You could use the screen to communicate with an Arduino so the brain is technically fused. That's interesting. Hmm. Well, certainly some really cool ideas being thrown around in this chat, I must say. I must say. Extremely cool. Uh... Anything want to play just for the last 10 minutes or so of this stream? What have we got? Let's go back into Fuse's history here. Scrubs. Now that is a cool idea. Mm. See, um, the idea makes me very happy because I do want to see that game finished and obviously it's something I started and, but at the same time, it's kind of like my sausagey baby, you know, and I don't know, I'm, I've got a very focused creative mind and, and but then there's going to be like 16 versions of sausage logistics and it's going to be impossible to keep tabs on all of them. Hmm. I mean, if someone wants to collaborate with me on sausage logistics, then I would be very, very up for that. Dave, which of these Fuse creations would you be most likely to play? A turn-based sci-fi game or a simple RPG? When you say simple RPG... Give me a comparison game. Give me a comparison game. Uh, and when you say turn-based sci-fi game, give me a comparison <laughs> game for that as well. Do you mean like a turn-based sort of uh, just battle mechanics, but like with sci-fi themes? Or do you mean like turn-based, like... Because... So, does anyone here a fan of Advance Wars? The GBA games, well, started on Famicom, but it was it reached its peak on the GBA. Because I would love to see something. I, I love that turn-based grid movement stuff. That is, uh, I, I love that. I mean, I'm a, probably like one of my absolute favorite game series ever is Fire Emblem, but a very specific three of them, and they were just the ones for the Game Boy Advance. So there was one that was only released in Japan and two that were released in the West and they were my favourite games growing up. And Advance Wars 1 and 2. They were just uh, awesome. And obviously they're very, very similar to each other but one is fantasy, one is military. But if there was like a sci-fi version of like an Advance Wars sort of type of battle mechanic turn-based, that would... I'd, I'd love to see that. I would absolutely love to see that. But then again, I love me a, a, an RPG... So, it's tough. RPG like the original NES Zelda, turn-based like the old Star Trek games. Let me have a look. Um, I definitely didn't play them, Steve, so I... Uh... 
I'm not familiar with them. I'd have to say, but the sound of um, an RPG like the original NES Zelda, that sounds really, really cool as well. Extremely, extremely cool. Yes, Stefano, you're right. Is I don't believe that's come out yet. A remake of this of Advance Wars has come out for Switch. It's called uh, Reboot Camp, and it's a combined version of Advance Wars 1 and 2, and I am incredibly excited about that. Uh, I don't know if it's been released yet. I thought it was going to be like September or something. I loved making maps. Yeah, yeah. Making maps was so much fun. Heavy hitters. Like uh, going into like an all-water map and like drawing like a like a word or something out of the land. But then I got really into like making a really, you know, good standard looking maps that weren't just memes or whatever, but they actually were functional. Um, yeah, Advanced Wars was really streamlined, but Fire Emblem had an awesome story driven side, right? It had a, I mean, it had something special and it had the, um, I want to say roguelike elements, but it's kind of not, is it? But you know, the permadeath. So if you lose a character, they're gone, unless you restart the whole level, which is just horrible. Uh, but you had to do it, because you can't lose anybody. December the 8th for Reboot Camp. I'm going to be counting down the clock. Yeah, the DS one was good, Vin. Advanced Wars for DS, it was good. Um, Dual Strike. It was, it was good, but... It had a little more bloat. Like, the G... Uh, just the GBA ones were just streamlined to a to a gem precision. They're absolutely beautifully made games. The pixel art was just awesome, and it didn't get things confused with the second screen. I, I felt it was a little bit cl clunky with the second I mean, It was okay, but it wasn't Advance Wars 1 and 2. I mean, Advance Wars 2 is just a perfect, perfect game. And Fire Emblem 7 on the GBA and Fire Emblem the Sacred Stones as well were uh, really something. We're really getting down into the uh, the old stuff here. Yeah, this is the sock spin cycle. Socks. This was where everything was sock based. Fire Emblem is great no matter what system you play it on, with the exception of the DS version. Sorry, guys. Yeah, the DS one wasn't great. To be honest, I wasn't a big fan of um, the GameCube Wii versions. In fact, to be honest, anything past the, uh, the, the Game Boy Advance version. I just think they focused on the wrong stuff. You know, they focused on, like, the relationship aspect, and that wasn't what I was in it for. Um, dashing Guard. I like the idea of playing a bit of Dashing Guard, actually. Did I go... There it is. James, that was your slimy sock race, was it? Ah, oh, nice. I, I was thinking, who did that one? Oh, okay. That function does not exist, apparently. Which is... Odd. So Dashing God doesn't work on Fuse version 3.0, it seems. That's strange. Ah, they mean set S. Or do they mean S set S? What? How did this ever work in the first place? Wow. I tell you what, Fuse 2.1.5. Um, yeah, set compatibility would be an option, but it, set compatibility doesn't affect all things. Um, it doesn't affect all things. No, I think I think that two point one five. Wait, that's a good point. 
You must be right about that, cat. You must be right. Uh, the Wii version was actually pretty good. Both story and mechanics were amazing. Yeah, I think I'm I'm a real sucker for pixel art. <laughs> I have to say, I really, really am. Okay, yeah, cat, you were you were totally right. Scrubs, what is the oldest game you have on there? That's a good question. Actually, let me just quickly find out what that is. <clears throat> Although it's going to take some time to get to the bottom. <laughs> oh no. The oldest project I have is Dealer Hand 01, which is going to be Piano Fire, I believe. Ben Taylor, nice of you to join us, mate, although you've caught me at the point at which I was thinking about sort of logging off fairly soon. But good to see you, Ben. Need to get you on one of these streams soon. Um, Yeah, this was an old one. This was quite... Um, Steve, you bet there's a lot of your programs on here. I think there's quite a few of yours. Although there's there's stuff like this, like uh, look at these, right? These are giant arrays of room designs that I was making with Luke quite a while ago. I mean, a very long time ago now for a Metroidvania sort of type um, game. And Luke never, I mean, Luke was going to be the, the the person programming it, and I was going to be doing a lot of the design. But uh, that one fell by the wayside. Luke left the team, and I need to go back to that and get what I need to get what he had done uh, off of him. Wuljan, do you remember this? Another skater kid. Yeah, the mountains one is um, that is an interesting one. I hope it. I wonder if it's gonna work. Because it was made on a very on a much previous version of of, uh, of Fuse. Heavy hitters, great stream, nice one, mate. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Um, thanks for asking my questions. Look forward to seeing that keyboard when it arrives. Well, yeah, don't hold your breath because <laughs> uh, you 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 will not survive. But uh, yeah, me too, dude. I I would love to see that keyboard happen. Uh, hope to see you in the future streams, man. It's been great having you here. Do all those points of percent help? <laughs> well, I mean, they, they are technically there, you know, they're, they're, they're happening. Um, it takes, I mean, it really has to do some stuff, this one does. I can't remember how good the movement is, and the frame rate probably isn't going to be great. I'm just really hoping it doesn't just say, uh, like, um, it's just going to suddenly be like, oh, that function doesn't exist. Oh, are you kidding me? Oh, it's because they now have, um, oh no, we oh, why doesn't it like that? Okay, I'm not about to go through that code. That is a very, very, very complex program. Okay, it's a really hard program. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do that right now. Um, but I will just play a little bit of Dashing Guard for the end of this stream. Because this is just a beautiful, just a great mechanic. In fact, actually, I haven't seen anything. Oh, Jens, is that what it is? Oh, I've looked at the chat. No, oh, okay. All right, let's try that again.
Get them all in a nice line. Chuck the little dude. Got to heal. Oh, these guys are nasty. Oh! Okay. Look at that. <laughs> Terrifying. Oh, you. You. Yeah, Jens, that's what I was going to say. Yeah, the author for this game, they just sort of turned up, delivered this incredible game. Um... And then I haven't seen anything of them since for quite a while. I mean, it got straight into the showcase gallery. It is a... It's a great game. Okay, we're going to have some of the fast dudes, I'm sure. Hopefully we can take all of these out in one fell swoop. Oh, see, this is going to hurt us a lot. Pick him up, get some health back. Are they faster now? No. Oh, okay, I've got a tank. We've got to get him to shoot himself. Wow, we just got absolutely destroyed by that tank. Where is it? Nice. What? Oh, can I, I can't dash with the dude. Come on, tank. More, please. Nice. Nice. <gasps> oh, <laughs> it is. It's a really nicely done game, Steve. Cool. Get all them blown up. Nice. Just take him. Oh, I was carrying the guy. Why was I carrying the guy? Where's the tank? Okay. Come on. <laughs> I want to just take these out. Oh, you meanie. Oh. Blimey. Hey, Lucas. Nice to see you, mate. Nice to see you indeed, sir. Hope you've had a lovely Sunday, mate. Um, but you've just caught the end of the stream, actually, because I'm getting rather hungry at this point. And I am thinking about the delicious katsu curry that I have waiting for me downstairs in the fridge that I need to warm up and stuff. But yeah, you, you get the picture. I think, um, I think I'm going to call it an end there, guys, for tonight. Um, I just want to say a, a huge thank you, as, as usual, to everyone coming and hanging out. It's been... Uh, I'm just so happy to see that we've got basically the same sort of number of viewers just to come and hang out and play some games for a couple of hours. I mean, that's awesome. So um, I will definitely be doing these again soon. And Steve, I'm not going to play Sultans of Swing for you on the guitar right now because I haven't practiced it at all. <laughs> um, well, the day is nearly gone, Devious. So... Uh, you know, I only have to be an adult for like the next sort of two hours and then I'm done. It has been a great time. Thank you very, very much, Stefano. It's been lovely to have you here. Thank you for the lovely comments. Vanessa thanks very much. Um, we'll definitely do this again. So I think we'll try and make a habit of it um, to do a either every couple of weeks or every week. We'll just do a stream in the evening like this. Um, you know, maybe on one of the weekends that isn't a game jam or the competition or something, maybe a mid-month thing. We'll figure it out. We'll see what makes sense. But I think this has been really nice and we can play some other games, maybe not just even Fuse games, but we can 
chat on Discord and see what sort of things we might want to play and um, all hang out and just have a chill time, you know? Just have a, just have a good old time. That's what it's all about, isn't it, really? Glad you had a great time. I'll be sure to make it next time. No, no worries, Lucas. It's been, yeah, it's been really nice. Um, and I'm sure, you know, you can catch up on it if you want. But, yeah, we'll definitely, we'll see you on the next one. Uh, after Dave said he needed to talk to me about a showcase submission, I said, okay, time to come out of the shadows. Ah, yeah, you did start life as quite a mysterious Fuse user. Um, and uh, now you're all over the community, James, which is great. And you've made some brilliant games. Yes, Jens, thank you very, very much. I, you, you know, don't doubt me. I was going to say it. I was going to say it. Um, if you haven't already, please like this video. Subscribe to the channel. It really, really helps. We are we are steadily just growing, which is just awesome. Uh, it's just awesome to see. Every time I look at the subscriber count, you know, you've got a couple more there. But we need to keep going, keep pushing it, so we can get more and more viewers on, and participants on our game jams and all of our views content. It's uh, awesome stuff. John Frank, thank you very, very much for that comment. That's really lovely. I have not seen you here before, actually. So um, thank you very much for the message. It really means a lot. And yes, I agree. Fuse is an awesome platform. Uh, so yeah, tell your friends, like and subscribe. If you've got anyone that you know who would be even vaguely interested in what we do here, um, whether it's the game jams or the the um, or the forum or the application itself, spread the word. You know, be a fuse evangelical. That is totally fine in my books. Uh, and yeah, thank you very very much for coming and hang coming and hanging out, guys. It's been a real pleasure. It is a pleasure to just sit with you all and just uh, read the chat, really, to be honest. It's a real privilege. So, right, with that all said and done, like and subscribe, or you'll be sorry. Um, <laughs> honestly, the things that you say when you're just in the middle of a stream. Uh, God. Oh, yes! Thank you, James, for pointing that out. Um... So, because this uh, end of month game jam was cancelled due to server issues, um, I have said that obviously when the server's up and running, whenever that is, um, we can have an early game jam for the end of the month and as in the end of um, September. In fact, we're going to have to. Okay, so here's, I was going to say a couple of things. I was going to say we can do an early game jam, but I don't mind doing an additional game jam as well if we don't want to miss out. However, at the end of next month, Kat and I are going on holiday for a week. Um, we're going to go to a nice forest place where you can stay in a nice little little chalet thing in a forest. And it's, it's a real chill. But um, yeah, and we're going with a few friends. So that's going to be really nice. We've been looking forward to it a lot. And it's been a really long time since we had... Uh, uh, a holiday so it's been a couple of years actually so yeah we are really looking forward to it so there won't be a game jam at the end of september not at that weekend however i can if if we want to do a very early game jam and maybe an additional one i'll just i'll test the water on discord and on the arena we'll see what people want to do uh, it obviously is all contingent on the server issues being resolved and i don't want to make any promises on these things um, because it's not me that's fixing them uh, it is uh, another member of the team, and I uh, let's just fingers crossed, be patient, and uh, hope that we can get to it in time uh, for uh, a decently early game jam. So I hope that answers all those concerns. Um, okay, I think that with all that said and done, that's everything I want to say. Thanks again, guys, for being so lovely and for hanging out and having a great time. And uh, I'll see you in the community, see you on Discord, uh, all around the forums, etc, etc. Any news on the patch? Okay, I will say a last thing on the patch. Um, we've had some... It's been difficult, okay, because Fuse has gone through a bunch of stuff. So we've moved office, and this all had to be done quite quickly. Because, uh, well, it was all a very sort of clutch series of things, so... We were waiting and waiting and waiting, and then we finally got the confirmation that we can do it, and then we were obviously wanting to do it quite quickly because we have to move out of the office that we were in. And so this all fell within a particular week, and uh, also our programmer from the US, uh, Will, 
of uh, Untied Games has also um, he's announced that he's going to be leaving the Fuse team to work on his own projects and uh, and and other things that he wants to do, uh, and that's happening sort of around this same time. Now we've been working on the patch just pretty much non-stop and uh, really putting in quite a lot of extra time and evenings etc. But there's been a lot going on, a, a real lot going on. And of course, I did mention on the Discord as well, but I won't go into great detail, but I've had some family issues with a family member um, going into hospital, um, which is now resolved, and uh, he is out of hospital, and he's at home and recovering well, which is brilliant, and I obviously couldn't be happier about that. Um, but yeah, just it's kind of like a confluence of things that are just life-based that all just fell in this last couple of weeks. So we've been working very, very hard, but there is going to be a small delay. So I know, I mean, I've promised a couple of, well, not promised, but I did say to a couple of people in the community that we're really hoping to get this patch out very, very quickly. Uh, but of course, I'm sure you can understand the uh, uh, the delays of life doing its thing. So we are hoping to have it out as soon as possible. And I really do mean that. I don't just mean soon, you know, oh, it's soon. I really do mean that we are going to be working very hard on making it as soon as possible. Um, that is certainly going to be my main focus um, in this uh, coming week. So, oh, thank you very much, everybody, for the well wishes. It really means a great deal. In fact, actually, I will just say to you, all well, like, while you're here, the support that you guys gave me on Discord when I did mention it, it really, really meant a lot. Um, so thank you very much. It, it, it really helped. And I told my parents about that. I told my mom about that, and she was very emotional about it. Um, so yeah, it really meant a great deal. So thank you very much, everybody. Um, okay. So the patch is soon. It's going to be unbelievably awesome. So watch this space. And everybody, I will see you very, very soon. Uh, hopefully for another stream as soon as we can and for a game jam. So take care, everyone. Have a lovely rest of your day. And um, yeah, see you soon. All the best.